is putting grit in us. He is putting us with teeth, with his anointing. That's what he's talking about. He said, I am making you a new, sharp, threshing instrument, having teeth, having my anointing to go forth with the effect of my word. That was a powerful word. And I tell you what, the ones that can grab a hold of that word, they'll realize what the Lord is manifesting and birthing in them. Hallelujah. Because I tell you what, we are in the sheep of God. You know, the Bible says, hallelujah, that his word is as a two-edged sword. It is sharp. And it cuts to us under. I tell you what, it'll lay that flesh open. It'll cut all the way to the bone, and it won't stop there. It'll even go down to the Mara. Hallelujah. And you know, I want God to do that. You know, a lot of people look on it that it's a bad thing to be chastised by the Lord. It's not. Because when the Lord chastises, He loves us. That means we are His children. So I want to be corrected. I want to be chastised by the Lord when I need it. But I just pray like David. I say, Lord, please. Don't chastise me, Lord, in your hot displeasure. At least you can sing me. But you know, the Lord knows exactly how much pressure to apply, don't he? Hallelujah. And he knows when to bring it up and to bring it off of us. Isn't it something that we serve, the God that we serve? Isn't it something what he's doing? And I tell you, I don't want to be ignorant of God. I don't want to be ignorant of his plan. You know, he said he once winked at ignorance, but now he commands all men to repent. I don't want to stand in ignorance. I want to go on in what? To the knowledge of the Son of God. Hallelujah. And realize what he is bringing to pass even in our day. The blind can't see. They can't see and be awakened to what they need to step on into. Hallelujah. But I tell you what, God is speaking this hour. He is sending forth a trumpet right now. It's been sounded, hallelujah, all through this nation and the nations of the world. And I tell you what, there's many hearing. And I tell you what, there's, they're shaking themselves. And they're getting up. And they're making preparation. They're beginning to seek God. They are beginning to dig in the Word. They're beginning to take note of what God's doing. And let's go on. And after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, talking about Jesus, been cut off in the middle of the week, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with the flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. See, when Jesus went to the cross and died up there on Calvary, no longer was it needed for them to do sacrifice offerings. No longer did they have to carry the goats and the lambs and offer them up on the altars anymore. It was ceased. It was cut off right there with Jesus because he gave the one and only sacrifice that could ever forgive our sins. His blood covered us. So right there it was ceased right there in the middle of the week. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even unto consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. He is talking about the wrath of God being poured out on the wicked. That, and that's the reason we go for sounding the word, sounding the trumpet, lifting our voice up as a trumpet, warning the wicked to flee from the wrath to come, and to the children of God to turn away, to repent and turn away from their iniquities. And I tell you what, if the Lord tells me I have iniquity, I have iniquity. And I need to start searching for it. Say, Lord, open it up to me. I don't want to go in my own way and deceive myself and think I'm all right when I'm not. God knows when I'm not right. 
We need to lay our heart open every day with God and ask the Lord to reveal our hearts unto us because I'm telling you, you don't know your heart. Only the Spirit of God can search out your heart. And I tell you what, if we'll do that every day, hallelujah, renew our minds daily and examine ourselves daily to see whether we stand in the faith or not. And I tell you what, you'll be standing ready. You'll be standing on ready. On ready. You'll be instant in season and out of season. And I tell you what, at all times you'll be at the place to send the devil to flight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. I tell you what, God's word is powerful and it's good. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, this word of God was inspired. Inspired and men. Oh, our fathers of old and the prophets of old. And all the way through the New Testament. Well, up to the New Testament, to Jesus, they wrote as the Holy Ghost moved upon them. But after Jesus, the Holy Ghost comes and lives and abides in us. So now when we write what the Lord tells us to write, hallelujah, he's not only upon us, he's within us. Hallelujah. And he's still telling people to write down what he is showing them and what he is speaking to them. I try to be fervent in that. To write down what God shows me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to read a few of these before I take you in another place in the Bible. In Jeremiah 36 and 2, he said, Take thee a roll of a book, and write therein all the words that I have spoken unto thee against Israel, and against Judah, and against all the nations. From the day I spake unto thee, from the days of jo Josiah, even unto this day. There is words that God spoke to Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel that's yet to come to pass. And the inspired word of God, hallelujah, we are going to recognize it as it's coming to pass. And we are going to be obedient to what God wants us to do. Them that will hear and receive. Ezekiel 1 and 3, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel, the priest, the son, Buzzah, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chabar. And the hand of the Lord was there upon him. Hallelujah. I tell you what, when God speaks, God will perform his word. Whatever he tells a man or a woman, hallelujah, whatever vessel he's using, if they'll speak what God says, he will surely perform it. And if it don't come to pass in their generation, it will somewhere down the line. Acts 1 and 6, men and brethren, this scripture. Now listen to what he's saying. P Peter and, and the apostles were saying, men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was God to them that took Jesus. Everything had to be fulfilled. That's the reason when Jesus went to John the Baptist there at the river to be baptized. And John said, Lord, I'm not worthy to even unloose your sandals must less baptize you. He said, John, we have got to fulfill the word of God. You have, you must baptize me. Because this word has got to be fulfilled. See, the time is at hand that the fulfilling of God's word is taking place. For this time in this season, and the end of all things. And I tell you what, whether we receive it or not, it's not going to prevent it from happening. The people that did not receive back in their day, did it stop the Word of God from coming to pass? No, it didn't. So whether we receive or whether we don't, it makes no difference as far as whether it's been fulfilled or not. And if we don't receive it, then what? We prevent ourselves from going on in where God wants us to take us. But see what is so sad? We prevent the ones that we would have took with us. 
And Isaiah said, oh, ye gates, you wouldn't go in and you prevented them that would have come in with you. 